Hello and welcome to edupediaworld.com. In the last session, we have discussed about theory of demand, which is all related to consumer's objective. In this session, we'll be discussing about theory of production, and this is all related to producer's objective. Just as every consumer has a common objective of maximizing happiness, same ways producers also have common objective and they want to maximize their profits. Now, how do I know what profit exactly are? Well, all I have to do is calculate that how much money has come in by the sale of the final product that is my total revenue. And how do I calculate total revenue? It's equal to the units sold into price per unit. And the other thing is that we have to determine that what is the money going out. That is the total cost and how to calculate this we will be discussing about all this in this theory of production. So in for a producer in order to calculate the total profit what he has to simply do is he has to deduct the total cost from the total revenue and he gets the profit. So we see here that if we minimize this, our profit will be maximized. So here, minimizing the total cost is the aim of a business concern so as to maximize the total profit. Managers of business firms therefore aim to minimize the production cost of a given output or we can say in other words that maximize the output from a given quantity of inputs. Let's see what are some fundamental questions that managers are faced with. These are some decision making areas. How can minimum cost of production be achieved? As I said that we can maximize the profit just by minimizing the cost of production. So how to achieve that minimum cost of production? The next decision making area is that how does output respond to change in quantity of inputs? How does technology matter in reducing the cost of production? Introducing new technologies basically leads to reducing the cost of production. Then how can the least cost combination of inputs be achieved? The other question is that given the technology, what happens to the rate of return when more plants are added to the firm? So these are basic, some basic decision making areas which a business manager has to face. The theory of production therefore provides a theoretical answer to these questions. It does provide tools and techniques to analyze the real life production conditions and to find solutions to the practical business problems. Now we'll move to understanding the theory of production but before moving to that let's just first understand some basic concepts in production. The first concept is input and output. See it's very simple input is basically any good or service that goes into the production process for example raw material labor so that is input. An input is simply anything which the firm buys for use in its production or other processes. When we talk about output, an output is any good or service that comes out of the production process. That is the final product, the final service which we provide to the end consumer is the output. When we talk about input, let's see that in economic sense what are the different categories of input. input it can be classified into labor, capital, 
land, raw materials, and entrepreneurship. So these are the various categories of input which goes into the production process to produce the output which is the final product or we can say the final service which we provide to our end consumers. Now next concept is fixed and variable inputs. What is fixed input? Fixed factor is one that is constant or remains fixed for a certain level of output. We can also say that those factors which does not change in the short run are fixed factors. For example, land, machinery, these are fixed factors. What is variable input? Variable input is basically defined as those who supply in the short run changes with the quantity of output produced. So as and on we increase the number of output produced, we have to increase upon the variable inputs. For example, labor, raw materials. So these are variable inputs. As and on we aim at producing more output, we have to increase the variable input. But fixed input, up till a certain level of production, we don't have to change the fixed input. For example, plant and machinery, land. So this is fixed and variable inputs. The third concept is short run and long run. Now it is not according to the time period used. It is basically according to the up till what time period the fixed factors are fixed and variable factors are variable. We define the short run and long run. Let's see how. Basically, we categorize it into three category. That is short run, long run and very long run. Short run basically is that time period where we can define the factors of production into two categories that is fixed factor and variable factor. Suppose land, plant, machinery. So that time period till which land plant, machinery, these factors remains fixed and does not change with the number of output produced with the increase in the output. That time period will be short run. And some factors in the short run are fixed in nature and some factors in short run are variable in nature. For example, if we have to increase the number of output, we don't have to increase the fixed factor, we have to increase the variable factor. So if like some factors are fixed in a time period and some factors are variable, that time period is short run. Now what is long run? In long run, basically it refers to a time period in which the supply of all the inputs, that is land, labor, capital, raw material, everything becomes variable. But it is not enough to permit the change in the technology. So every here in long run, all the inputs become variable except the technology. Technology remains fixed. And else all the factors of production that is land, labor, capital, machinery, everything becomes variable. All other factors becomes variable. So that time period is long run where all the factors becomes variable except the 
technology. Now, what is very long run? Very long run is that where all the factors of production, even the technology also changes. All the factors of production becomes variable. Even the technology also, including the technology also change. We can say that it refers to a time period in which the technology of production is also subject to change or can be improved. So that time period is very long run. Now these were some basic concepts in production theory that is input and output, fixed and variable inputs, short run and long run. Now see in case of input and output input is a independent variable and output because it depends upon the productivity of input is a dependent variable So we can basically state a relationship between input and output in a mathematical form because output depends upon the input used. So we can state this relationship in a mathematical form and that is production function. Production function is a mathematical presentation of input and output relationship. For suppose if we have to show that what is the output produced by using these inputs, we will show it like this. What is the quantity produced? It will depend upon that is it is a function of land and building labor, capital, raw material, technology and time. So the quantity of output produced it depends upon or it is a function of these inputs used. LB is stands for land and building. L stands for labor. K stands for capital, M stands for raw material, capital T stands for technology and small t stands for time. So the production of a particular quantity of a particular product depends upon these factors of production. Now in order to simplify the production function, the economists basically have divided the total inputs used into fixed and variable. That is those inputs which remain fixed for a quantity produced and those inputs which vary with the number of units produced. So the production function is now simplified to quantity produced is a function of labor and capital used. Labor here will include all those inputs which are variable in nature that is it shows the variable factor of production and capital here will include all those inputs which are fixed in nature that is it shows the fixed factor of production. So simplifying upon the production function that is the quantity produced depends upon the variable and fixed inputs used in the production of a particular product. So we can thus summarize that it is a mathematical presentation of input and output so after understanding that what is production, what is production function and the various basic concepts related to production, we will be continuing with the short run laws of production in the next session. Thanks for watching videos on Edupedia World. Have a nice time. Thank you.